Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Alpha 3.6 is now live, so let's take a look at the patch notes for the latest release. What's new, what's important, what's still broken. If you have yet to get an account and you want to get into Star Citizen with 3.6, then please use the link below in the description to get 5,000 bonus UEC, the in-game currency. There is a new game launcher, which now allows you to change from the live build to the PTU build at the click of a button. You can get this at robertspaceindustries.com forward slash download or just update your launcher. Hopefully that will uh, do it, but uh, get it from the download link if it does not. Uh, there's new vehicles and ships. So there's an entirely new surprise vehicle, the Anvil Ballista, a mighty two-person missile truck that poses a massive threat to ships within its range with eight size five missiles, two size seven missiles and Gatling weapons as well. It is a really cool piece of hardware. The Kruger Intergalactic P-72 Archimedes is also now flyable. This is a luxury snub craft, suitable for potentially some racing as well. There is also the reworked P-52, as well as the Vanguard Hoplite and Warden. Please remember that the P-52 and P-72 do not have quantum drives, so are not suitable for your only ship on your account, because some people might potentially upgrade their Aurora to a P-72. So just sort of like bear that in mind. And all of those are currently available to buy as part of a 3.6 live sale. And as I said, the Anvil Ballista is entirely new and is available to buy and use in game now. There are some major features and additions with 3.6 as well beyond ships. The hacking system, you can now hack Comores, uh, Security Post Korea, and other security depot consoles, some underground facilities. Hacking requires a uh, single use device, a crypto key or hacking chip. It's a gadget which you can uh, equip by pressing four after it's been put in your utility slot from the Moby Class Equipment Manager. These devices vary in style and quality, some taking longer than others, some being less reliable and needing more player input, basically having the player click continue on a screen before a timer runs out at um, uh, various stages. It's early stage, very, very basic hacking, admittedly, but uh, these hacking devices can be found at shops like Cubby Blast, but also Grim Hex and other locations as well. And you can have a load of them on you as well and uh, just keep on switching them out. Counter missions are generated for players to prevent hacks as well when you're doing them. Comma rays can be turned off for mission objectives or to black out an area from detecting crimes. At security posts uh, and depots, you can hack down your criminal rating. There is an overhaul of the law system in general. Crime stats now directly impact the level of security forces that engage you. There are various crimes, system-wide ones, the UE jurisdiction ones, but there's also jurisdictions based on where you are in the Stanton system, Crusader, Hurston, Art Corp, and a blackout area at Grimhex. They will have different jurisdictions and different crimes, different misdemeanors. Comores, security forces, and landing zones can detect crimes. Based on your crime, you can be automatically fined or get a crime rating and chased by security. Security will also interdict ships and scan them, whether or not they've done a crime. If you're found to be a criminal or have illegal, stolen or prohibited goods, then they will be um, either confiscated or you'll be engaged or both. Attempting to avoid the scan or not coming to a halt as well when they try and scan you those security ships is also a crime. A ship is not counted as stolen until a player tries to reclaim it on insurance though. Stolen goods and illegal commodities can also now only be sold at less than reputable locations, which you might have to look around for. But coincidentally, there are new scrapyard locations for these sort of reasons on moons and planets, but you can um, find some other places to sell this sort of stuff. Grimhex is obviously a, a good hub for that. And if you're looking for some of the new locations around the game, these security depots and the scrapyards, you'll be able to see some of them on moons and planets, um, literally just by looking and, and clicking on them. But also if you do missions, uh, especially ones uh, like the less than reputable personal missions, then you'll be able to find some of these locations much more easily because they'll be part of a mission objective. They've added hover mode as well, or VTOL. Um, this is an addition to the flight model. VTOL and hover mode will automatically engage near planetary surfaces with atmosphere when you're going below a certain velocity threshold. When on, ships will swap to their VTOL thrusters, which may include alternative thruster configurations where applicable. Uh, when in hover mode, the ship will hover until the player gives an input, pitch forward, that will result in moving forward, and pitching back will result in, you know, moving backwards. Uh, the roll will result in lateral movement. 
If the ship attains enough forward velocity, then it will switch back into its forward-driven flight mode, the traditional flight mode. But hover mode is not finished yet, so sort of bear that in mind. There's lots of little problems, and it's quite tricky to use um, when you haven't got used to it. Um, even being used to it is still pretty damn tricky, in my opinion, if you're trying to land a, a ship that's around the same size as the opening to a hangar on somewhere like Lawville in, in gravity and atmosphere. So sort of bear that in mind. Use the horizon marker on your first person HUD for your ship, as well as velocity and acceleration control. They're very useful in hover mode. In regard to acceleration control, they have grouped thrusters into a power group, which can now be throttled to um, control thruster acceleration. This is right alt and mouse wheel that will uh, affect that on the right side of your HUD now, where it previously was the hydrogen meter, is now the percentage of power in your uh, thrusters. Uh, so use that effectively. Um, holding X as well um, as a piece of advice uh, is sort of like uh, space brake, which will also level you out when you're in hover mode. And remember to put your, your landing gear down because it's decoupled now uh, from VTOL mode. So press N to put your landing gear down and N to put it up as well. But if you go into quantum drive, uh, your landing gear will automatically be retracted. Misfires and degradation. So uh, ship components, coolers, power plant shields now suffer from notable degradation, which can accumulate through time. So frequent overheating and damage and uh, just general use. Degradation can be repaired with any uh, other ship damage at major stations. But this is also combined with the misfire events to um, ship shields, power and thrusters and coolers, which basically they now also all have a chance to misfire based on their wear and how much damage they have taken. If it's in perfect condition, a component is extremely low, you will have any form of misfire. But um, as that increases, you'll have much higher chances. Misfires can range from minor visual blips, more major with reduced functionality of the component or critical um, failures resulting in a temporary shutdown potentially of that component. They've also added FPS weapon scopes. Um, so some weapons can attach um, via the equipment manager. There's a one times red dot, a three times hollow and a four and eight times telescopic flavors of scope and only certain weapons can equip certain ones. They are available to buy at FPS weapon shops and are available on the sort of like display shelves as well. There has been a shield rework with major differences between manufacturers and types of shield now. So size one shields are now stop regenerating on hit. Um, and once a set amount of time passes without further strikes, the shield will begin to regenerate again. An exception to this is the ASAS manufacturer, which constantly has shields regenerating, but has a reduced sort of health pool compared to the others. Size two shields have no damage delay, low regeneration, and a large health pool. And size three shields have very large health pools and regeneration rates basically requiring multiple um, ships or very large weapons to overcome their regen. There's been some other tweaks and changes as well. Power settings only impact shield regen now. They've toned down the shield's VFX. They've changed the shield regen delay to be per generator rather than per face. And overclocking no longer affects shield allocation rates or hardening. So some of this is the framework in place for them to have the signed distance field tech, which will be coming um, the, the visual improvements and the way they do that in a later patch. There has been an economy update as well. They've added ship purchasing kiosks to ship shops around the verse, which will have different ships stocked and now allow for most of the flyable ships and vehicles to be bought in game. Ship prices, commodity prices, um, the amount you earn from missions and going through mission chains effectively have all been rebalanced as well, um, as well as what commodities and what items are bought and, and sold in certain locations. So there's also been updates to how outposts and landing zones purchase and sell those goods so it's less artificial. They have a maximum amount of space for stock and funds to purchase with. That will increase if they sell items. This also takes into account black market and stolen goods as well. Certain locations will buy them. There's been additions in the form of new space stations which have replaced the old rest stop stations in game they have a lot of variation externally but their interiors are still based on the original uh, procedural tech for that and they will be overhauled in 3.7 with lots of new rooms and um, better matching the huge exteriors for some of those stations they've also updated transit systems so trains and and trams are now on loops with um, multiple trains on each line which should reduce waiting times across the board elevators are now 
physicalized where sensible and can now move to multiple pads and hangers rather than just one there's literally a little network they can move through a selection of available destinations will be available via interaction at the interior elevator button panels um, as you would normally use them just to go one location now there are many uh, delamar and levski have moved further away from crusader basically into their own object container and um, effectively the same distance that you would expect a planet to be away from another planet they have added clustering for mineable entities so that mineable rocks now appear in medium to large clusters typically the sort of components and composition of those asteroids and rocks will be similar if they're grouped together or near each other there's been lots of other little tweaks and improvements to mining over the last few patches as well environment wise they've added uh, automated turrets to grim hex to sort of like cover it and prevent people um, trying to grief or pad ram or um, do things there that are unwarranted they've updated several locations to now use decoupled lighting for improved visual looks they've reduced the volume of the combat music and added the option to mute this music um, in the menu They've added the ability for AI pilots to strafe during passes, and they've added the oxygen and medipen to Lawville, Tammy and Sons shops. They've also added average skill level for AI pilots to increase variation in their sort of like um, way they engage players. They've updated the expanded player carryable item system, so items can be held in different ways and exactly what can be picked up. Uh, lighting passes on exteriors of underground facilities have been made. There's been visual tweaks around Lawville um, and generally to the procedural tech and planetary tech. Lighting's been decoupled. Mission-wise, they've added illegal style delivery missions for prohibited and stolen goods, which obviously builds into that law system. They've re-enabled ECN missions. There's been various improvements to FPS space missions. They've temporarily removed escort and distraction style missions. All eligible player criminals will now have a pvp bounty mission always generated for them uh, ships and vehicle wise and weapons for them there's uh, additions of the max ox neutron repeaters these are rapid fire short to medium range size one to three weapons purchasable at center mass uh, at area 18 they use neutron style damage which has damage that increases over its range they've added ship hailing so you can now start a video call with a pilot or a ship or a vehicle that you're targeting by pressing the six key selecting the target in um, comms and uh, targeting mfd as well uh, works or uh, your mobile class comms app you can literally talk to that person they've added ship specific voice channels that you automatically join when entering and leaving a ship there's been the addition of a cargo grid to the valkyrie i believe it's 30 scu they've updated the hud of the gladius this is the new style of hud that is in testing and will be propagated to other ships in the future at least um, some of bits of it i mean they're making the huds more modular and the ui is more modular uh, and uh, improving all their tech for that at the moment in their pipeline they've decreased the hull strength of the arrow and increased the hull strength of the reliant they've significantly increased the hull strength of the car 2 al they've added nozzle flaps to the hornet and super hornet they've temporarily removed the ability to change paints in the vehicle manager app they've updated uh just uh, j-u-s-t quantum drives for increased durability and more distinction from other classes they've updated various ship vfx they've updated the um, ai hammerhead to use gunship flight behavior they've updated ship and weapon audio as well uh, they've increased the damage output of missiles which makes them very dangerous they've updated the cooling of the dragonfly and nox thrusters to make them more usable they've updated the rate of fire on all repeater weapons fps wise they've added the ability to free look and activate head tracking while holding a weapon you basically decouple your head from the way that your weapon's pointing free look in first person now operates as a hold rather than a smart toggle uh, there's the new bearing s38 pistol which is a semi-auto ballistic pistol with medium damage purchasable at center mass and port olisar there's also the Kassen warner lumen v smg which is a burst fire laser weapon which can be again purchased at center mass and conscientious objects they've improved the look and feel of the character jump mechanic and update ragdoll properties to improve look and feel in all situations they polished out um, some of the first person turns and crouch turns they added a display screen to the multi-tool and uh, one to the arc light pistol as well UI wise the comms visor display now um, displays which channel you are VoIP 
voiceover IP broadcasting to, and who else is in that channel with you and who is speaking. Players can now invite an entire channel into their party. Also, players now default auto join the global proximity VoIP channel. Don't worry, it's still push to talk on plus so you're not going to automatically be talking or anything you just all join that channel uh, video and lighting improvements to com calls have been made color and names of channels can now be edited in the mobile glass players can now decide which chat channel is directed to the visor and there's new webcam head tracking features available via the comms menu some major bug fixes party launch and join friends should now work from the main menu again which is probably the most major thing in this patch for me um i mean it's like half joking but that was broken in 3.5 and hell uh, missiles should now be able to be countermeasured they fixed various ship damage and animation states IFCS sounds for coupled and crews should now work on all ships. They fixed various FPS weapons updating on the HUD and various player animation updates and fixes to prevent players getting stuck and passing out. They fixed various infinite loading screens. The comms MFD should now properly update and not be blank for other crew. They've added an interaction to the interior cargo bay of the 300 series so that you can get out if someone locks you in there or you lock yourself in there. There are fixes for visual blurring on rotating asteroids. The Reliance series should now be able to store handheld cargo. Combat music should no longer seem much louder than other music. Uh, they fixed missing radars on some custom ships. Fixed weapons should no longer aim towards the target as if gimbaled when in assist mode. HUD fixes and cleanup of items um, that shouldn't have here on those huds um, have been done they've increased the health of destructible turrets so they can't be destroyed with melee attacks turret movement audio should now play properly they've updated spline jumps to avoid impacts with planetary bodies assisted gimbals should no longer wander when no target is locked the undersuit should no longer display thrust of vfx when not in eva there's been fixes to automated landings and an issue where scan blob contact vfx were played for everyone in an area ruto's hologram should now appear at grimhex again female characters should now sit in the cockpit seat of the Super Hornet correctly. Targeting pips should no longer continue to show and lock to screen after a weapon is destroyed. Players should no longer fall through a planet when loading back into the game if they've previously logged out in a bed there. And the bed logging system, um, and as well as ships getting stored system, works a lot better. You're much less likely to get your ship teleported away from you or disappear and be locked in a location that you can't retrieve it from or um, it is very hard to retrieve it. And also bed logging just seems to work a lot more readily now, though obviously not all the time there are a variety of known issues with the live patch still players can get stuck on the initial loading screen if that happens alt f4 or restart your client and you can also um, hold backspace to attempt to kill your character and to force a respawn which can sometimes work missiles on the anvil blister may occasionally be unable to lock and or fire a workaround with that is to reclaim or respawn the vehicle mission givers can sometimes be in incorrect positions and may not interact correctly with players the hud can vanish when in quantum drive dropping hacking chips can cause them to fall through the floor significant first person frame rate reductions can occur performance issues that's an annoying problem um, i wish they had got that fixed for live but um, it is what it is. Textures will uh, display on some visors on some helmets that aren't supposed to be there. AI ships have unintended wing wobble behavior. The train on Lyria might also disappear in some areas. High terrain in high density areas apparently. They've also removed collisions from the freelancers turret forks as a temporary workaround to get larger objects in, pending animated retrapped or, or something. Not, not entirely sure what's happening with that. Uh, I would expect a 3.6.1 patch out reasonably soon to address some of those known issues and any others that pop up over the next week, because I suspect there are likely some that appear just on the live build, but also because there's a lot more eyes on a patch. We also know that they are working on the 890 jump and ship rentals for a 3.6.x branch patch um, between now and 3.7 as well, so expect even more uh, quality of life and fixes in those sort of patches as well. I'd love to hear from your experiences in 3.6 live, whether they be good or bad, in the comments below. 
I'm off to play some more 3.6 now though. Every month we have a ship giveaway for July. It's for an 890 jump, the mighty luxury ship. To be in for a chance of winning that, just be subscribed to my channel and comment on any of my videos this month. More details down below. This has been donated by my radar. They make a real world weather app. And this also has some of the astral bodies from Star Citizen in there too, giving some really interesting information. It's getting more updates and functionality that app as well. And they're adding the planets into the game too. I'm also shilling for NordVP if you're looking for a VPN, check them out as they offer many benefits over free services and allow you to more securely and more freely access the internet as well as helping you be protected while you're playing online. If you're looking for a gaming PC or upgrade instead, consider Shadow as well, a cloud gaming service that allows you to stream a Windows 10 gaming PC environment from a data center directly to your phone, laptop, PC, or other device. It's great for Star Citizen as long as you have an appropriate internet connection. For both of those services, NordVPN or Shadow, please use the code BOARDGAMER for discount. If you would like to further support my channel and for more Star Citizen content, consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member with that join button below my videos. All the links and all that sort of stuff down below. If you've got any feedback, if you'd like to talk about anything that we've talked today, if you've got any questions, whatever, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.